Hello everyone, how you doing? This is your coach Renz and I want to show you some gratitude for joining me right now as we begin a journey to escape the hell loop that you're in. If you're finding me for the first time, we talk about the 360 degrees of life based on the hermetic principles and understanding of spirituality from all walks of life, not just centered upon one doctrine, but on a true doctrine of universal understanding. For everyone who supports this channel through Patreon and YouTube groups and shopping at Uncle Ren's Popcorn or being a client of mine with Coach Ren's, I greatly appreciate you. And your support is what continues to keep the channel going, but also more importantly, your gratitude is just an example of how much you mean to me. So today, to process that even further, we are going to discuss breaking out of a hell loop. Now, for someone who does not follow traditional religion, who does not accept that the books, the literature that has been written, the stories that have been told are altogether 100% truth, undeniable truth, the hand word of God passed down to man, that most of the stories, most of the literature is filled with cultural differences, cultural prejudices, cultural reasoning and cultural rationale. But to look deeper, to look between the lines is where we must go in order to find the universal truth. And in that, we're going to talk about a hell loop today. Now, many of you may say, well, what is a hell loop? You don't believe in hell as far as a place that you go. So what is it? Well, as I've said on many occasions, heaven and hell exist in the mind. Heaven and hell is right now, it's right here. Heaven and hell is always wherever your consciousness exists. Does that mean that it ceases to exist when you depart from this existence? No. Wherever your consciousness goes, believe it or not, you will enter a place where heaven and hell will still exist together wherever you are. You may be at a higher conscious plane, you may be at a lower conscious plane. It does not matter. You will still be in the position where heaven and hell can exist wherever you are. Now, how does this happen from creation to damnation? Well, from the beginning, we've always been here. You've always been here. Everything in existence has always been here. There is nothing added to the creation nor taken away from creation from the moment that all things began to exist, so did you. Now, did you exist in the same corporal form that you do now? No, of course not. How could you? Because you have not existed on this plane of existence for the entire time. You had a birthing into this, for lack of a better term, third dimensional level, and you, had an, you will have an ending, and many have had endings. But you had that same repetitive cycle through multiple levels. Now this is not to say that reincarnation into a butterfly, an ant, or reincarnation into some other human or dharma that you must satisfy um, is the only key and the only thing and that is the tradition that we're following. No, but it is the understanding of the second hermetic law and that is as above, so below. The law of correspondence. That there are heavens above and heavens below, that there are hells above and hells below. Not just Dante's Inferno and his vision of levels of heaven above and levels of heaven below or the Islamic tradition of multiple levels of heaven and hell, but just the simple understanding and rationale that there is as above, so below, so within, so without. That when you leave this existence, the next existence will have similar properties to what you exist here. If you're on a higher plane, you may not have to deal with some of the petty jealousies or earthly attachments that we have at this level of existence, but you will have those at that level of understanding. And the purpose of a heaven and hell always comes down to some level of redemption. The stories that have been told over and over again 
throughout time and history consistently has a theme of a creator who makes a heaven and then either through disobedience or jealousy or blasphemy or a desire to take control or some type of choice of eating an apple or opening a box, man falls through the angelic host seeing men's, the daughters of men and falling into wanting to be with those women or revolting or as the Hindu teach of a fiery uh, war in heaven between the gods and the children of the gods. Every creation story eventually gets to a point where the sons and daughters of God, the creator of the Brahmin source, revolts against that authority disobeys that authority or even in the Genesis story has an opportunity to exist in a garden of Eden but then is disobedient to the one rule which cast them out and forevermore must seek redemption in one form or fashion whether it's through sacrifice whether it's through good deeds whether it's through satisfying a karmic debt or a dharmic debt whether it is through the process of finding a savior or true submittance to the God, following this prophet or that one, there is a process of redemption that always happens. And as time has moved forward, each process becomes easier and easier and easier. At one point, it was total submission to the laws of God while other points it was totally hindering upon how many sacrifices of animals and bloodletting that occurred. Others have been through the total separation from anyone who doesn't believe nor agree. The worst have been through some mass suicide attempt because some charismatic leader led people down a pathway of destruction, not realizing that the cycle will continue. But let's bring it down to a corporal moment right now. The easier understanding, away from the grand thought process of cosmic universe, to your life, your life. When you look at your life right now, as I often look at mine, is your life repeating itself? It may not be with the same people, it may not be with the same situation, but is it on repeat? Are you going from one job to the next job, to the next job, to the next job, finding yourself going into the job excited? This is great, this is grand. A new opportunity, I'm making a little bit more money. My finances are going to get a little bit better or a lot better because of this newfound opportunity. But once you get into the job, after a bit of time of politicking and clicks and everything else, you find that the cycle is repeating. Now you don't like the job as much. Now things aren't going as well as they were before. So we had a slight interruption, but we're going to continue. So you're on this job and now you don't particularly care for the job anymore. You, you're more... Uh, not wanting to go there, not liking the people, having issues with the politics, issues with the conflicts, issues with the cliques. And so now your mindset is this job is horrible. This job is hell. I don't like getting up in the morning to go and do what I want to do. So you begin to look for another opportunity, another job, and then the cycle repeats itself. You find one, you go there, you educate yourself, you change careers. And all of a sudden you think, oh, this one is going to be great. But Unfortunately, you took the same person, you, to each job. And when you do that, you're repeating the cycle. You're creating a hell loop because the same you is going to find the same environment there that you had at the previous job. You go from one relationship to the next relationship. The people look different. The person looks different. You've gotten older. The situation is not exactly the same. But your emotional ties to it, the way you feel every day, your stress every day, your stressors every day, it ends up being the same. It started out great. 
you were both gunning for making each other happy. But then things change. Your natures begin to come out. Your issues that you're holding on to that you thought you had in control while you were single are now bringing about damnation. Hell has now entered your household. You do not have sanctity. You do not have heaven at home. You do not fall into the arms of your mate when you had a rough day because your mate becomes your rougher day or maybe even the creator of your rough day. So you have lost that again. And so what? What do you do? You go off and you look for it somewhere else. You think that let me go and be single. Let me get myself together because the next time is going to be great. I'm going to have my life in line. I'm going to have my finances in order. I'm going to have my business in order. I'm going to have my health in order. I'm going to have my heart in order. And I know what to watch out for this time. But then you end up repeating the same situation again and again and again. If this was not so, the divorce rate wouldn't be so high. If this was not so, the divorce rate on second and third marriages would not be so high. But yet, they are. Simply because the hell that you existed in before, you still exist in and you're in a loop. You're in a cycle. And the main reasons are because you have not figured out how to change it. You have not found your why you should change it. The first thing you should realize is that hell is not a closed loop. Hell is not a closed door. That anytime you decide to walk out, anytime you decide to change the fact of your existence in hell, you can change it. Whether we are looking at a cosmic situation or down to a earthly situation. Either one can be changed. I will say this, as above, so below, so below as above. If you desire to change your cosmic situation, you have to first change this earthly situation that you're in now. Whether you call it the earthly, the physical, the matter plane, or we're talking about the third dimension, fourth dimension, fifth dimensional planes, however you describe it, it's up to you to change it, to break and break yourself free and escape hell. Because just as many of the old stories taught you, the angels who fought against the creator were cast down into hell. That hell is earth. It tells you it was earth. Many different books, the Sumerians, say that the fallen angels came down to earth. The book of Enoch speaks of the watchers coming down to earth. Those who have fallen have always come down to earth, but earth has always been heaven and hell. As the Gospel of Thomas says, that split a rock, well, lift over a rock and I am there. Split a piece of wood and I am there. That heaven and hell is all around you, that is inside of you and outside of you. That the veil has been pulled over your eyes and once you release the veil and let your single eye be clear, you will then recognize that heaven is in the same space as hell. It is all the perception of the negative influences in your mind, the traditional and conditional influences in your mind. So how do we break free? That's the, that's the million dollar question. How do we break free? Well, the first thing that we must establish is what's keeping us there? What emotional trauma that is not allowing us to bridge this gap, not allowing us to leave this condition, this state of being, this state of mind. Well, you're blocked by a few things. So let's talk about those few things first. Many talk about how this world is an illusion, that it's a matrix that we've been forced into, that we're all sharing a grand delusion, a grand dream, a shared state of being. And that would be true because I see the world from my two eyes, but I also see the world through my third eye. You see everything from your perspective. Everybody who goes about their day, and I often wonder when I see someone, I'm thinking they have an entire life that they are going to 
exist in, an entire world that is encapsulated within my world, that is a shared vision. It is almost like if we were attached to a dream machine and all sharing a dream. That is what this existence, this consciousness is. It's a shared illusion of finiteness. A shared illusion of finiteness. Not realizing that it's eternal, that it's infinite, that you are infinite, that I am not this body. This body is the poverty that my spirit dwells in. It is not me. It is merely a shell casing in order to exist on this matter plane, a vibrational suit that has slowed down enough to exist in this plane. So one of the things that keeps you from entering heaven is your fear of survival. Your idea that there is a thing called death. There is no such thing as death, but you are eternal. And when you realize that you are eternal, that, that this is only step three or four or five, and then there are seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 15, three million more steps to take, that this is eternal. You are eternal. So there is no reason to live in fear of anything. To live in fear of heartbreak, to live in fear of poverty, to live in fear of poor health, to live in fear of, uh, of people leaving your life, to, to live in fear of anything is to take away from what you believe the image you were created in. If you truly believe you were created in the image of God, then why do you exist in fear? Instead of, as X-Clan would say, existing in a state of vanglorious is how you should exist. The second thing that keeps you is guilt. Guilt of mistakes that you have made. You know, guilt is a prison within itself. If you walk around constantly, consistently feeling guilty about mistakes that you have made, then and you never forgive yourself, then you are destined truly to repeat the exact same hell loop that you have been existing in. This one probably feels, not probably, it, it fuels your hell loop more than any other thing. Guilt does. If I felt guilty, about the fact that I got a divorce from my children's mother, then that guilt would carry into the next relationship and the next one and the next one and the next one and so on and so forth. That I wouldn't be able to be a good father to my children if I carry that guilt. That I wouldn't be able to enter into a blended family and be a good male role model to whomever the children are in the next relationship. I wouldn't be able to carry that if I felt guilty about what happened. It's something that happened. It was a situation that did not work out. But for me to carry guilt and say that I, I am not a good father, I am not a good husband, I cannot be because I, I made these mistakes in my past, then that would keep me from ever overcoming those mistakes, from ever overcoming any traumas that I experienced in my life. So the first thing I must do is forgive myself, recognizing that again, I am eternal, so that there is no reason for me to continue to process the guilt and remain in that loop over and over again. Then we are held back by our shame. If the guilt doesn't get you, your shame surely will. Usually shame is put on you by other people and not yourself. You take what other people say and internalize it and make it your own. But that shame comes from your own personal self-disappointments. The fact that I've opened businesses that did not work. This one, doing great. But I've opened locations that didn't work to my disappointment. I've lived in places where I could have lived better to my disappointment. I've had, I've made money and didn't have anything to show for it to my disappointment. But when you allow other people's disappointment, the other people's idea of what you should have accomplished and should have done become your own, 
your self-disappointment grows to the point where you no longer accept that it's just something that happened. It's just what it is. And that you are whoever you are and, sh and, and you will go back out and try again. Failing forward, allowing yourself to learn and grow and develop from each adversity that you face that you um, faced. So learning from your adversities and you, you should learn from your adversities instead of internalizing them as a failure and they becoming the embodiment of your shame. There is absolutely nothing to be ashamed of. We will cover it a little bit more in a minute, but whoever you are is who you are and you should not be ashamed of that. Whatever your desires for life are, do not be ashamed of of your desires for life. Do not be ashamed of the amount of money, the people that you want to be around, the activities you want to participate in. Who is to say that it is not for you? I always believe in following the golden rule when it comes to that. Do unto others as you will have them do unto you. And fulfill your desires as long as you're not harming anyone else. If you're not forcing someone else to do something that they truly do not want to do, then it is okay for you to do it. If you want to climb whatever mountain, do whatever thing you want to do, kiss whoever you want to kiss, spend money however you want to spend money, go do it. As long as you're not forcing anyone else or taking or stealing or hurting anyone else, do you. Do you. Do you. We're then held into this prison of a hell loop by our own grief. My grandmother passed away and I grieved for her for a decade or more. That I would not allow myself to get close to any other mother figure because I grieve for the fact that if I, I can't take losing another person. There were friends and family members that I lost when I got divorced the first time. And when I did, the pain that it caused created a grief in me that said that I cannot get close to other external people and allow them to become my family because the pain would be too great if I lose them. I had to recognize that I was carrying a grief that prevented me from loving again. As long as you carry a grief realizing not, and that doesn't allow you to love again, you can never grow beyond this prison. You have to realize as everything is eternal, nothing dies, nothing is lost. That the love is replaced in this existence with a new love. And you have to be open to that new love. You have to allow that love to come in, to not let it be held back by your pain of your shame and your guilt and your fear, but to allow it to come in brand new, fresh, give it its due in the sun and not let it be broken by the barriers you put in front of it. Because the only person you're hurting is yourself. The only person you're putting into this hell loop at that point is yourself. If another person is involved and they recognize the hell loop, they will eventually separate themselves from you because their vibration will not match with yours and they will leave. The next one is, why, is lies, the lies of ourselves. We keep telling ourselves that we are something that we're not. Oftentimes we're told that by the conditioning of our family, the conditioning of our culture, the conditioning of our religions, not realizing that you are whoever you are. Your true nature is trying to burst out you have to accept your true nature, who you actually are, and live it. Live it to its fullest. Live it unapologetically, not allowing anybody else to determine what that is. This again, when you live this way, you cannot live by the grief, the shame, the guilt, the pain, the fear of anyone else or yourself. And just be you and enjoy it. Love it. As long as you're not hurting anyone else, you should go out and do you, be you, live your life on your terms and no one else's. What also keeps us is this illusion, but it's all the illusions of man. The illusion that we have created in the ideas of gender and race and 
nationalities and cultures and religion. Every war on this planet has been fought over resources, over religion, and over races, and over nationalities. When, when everybody's white, we fight about the different tribes. I'm Irish, I'm Scottish, I'm English, I'm French. When everybody's black, it's tribal. I'm Zulu, I'm Ashanti, I'm from Nigeria. We fight over things that don't actually exist. Here's the thing about it. America once didn't exist, so why fight because I'm an American? Because at one point, 250 years ago, America did not exist. Thousands of years ago, the nations of, of Europe and Africa and South America, none of them existed. They were all different names. The area that you call, we call the Middle East has changed names, whether it was the Phoenicians, the Babylonians, the Persians, the Greeks, the Romans, the Egyptians, the Syrians, everyone has owned it at some point in time. And the name continues to change and it will change again and again and again. The illusion is that we're separate when the reality is that we're all one. Everything is one. Everything is energy. Everything moves, everything vibrates, everything is always in a conscious state of transmutation. You're either living into one or you're dying into another. One or the other is happening. We're always in a constant state of transmutation, of energy transference. When you make love with someone, you are transferring energies, both emotionally, physically, mentally, spiritually. You're transferring emotional energy. You're transferring your energy. The same when you argue, when you're fighting someone, you're transferring energy as well. We are always in that state. So the illusion that things are separate, they're not. They're not. The wind blows in Africa and creates a hurricane in the Caribbean. Everything is connected. And the last thing that keeps us is our attachments to this reality. Many will say that they don't have an attachment to this reality because when they die, they're going to heaven. They believe in Jesus, or they believe that they followed the law. They believe that they've satisfied their dharma. They've satisfied their karma. They followed the teachings of Allah. They've done whatever. And they believe that they are going to live with their God in paradise. So many will say that they don't have an attachment to this reality, but then let me come up prepared to kill you or let your life be in danger and you will cling to this life like a rabid dog because you do have your attachments to this reality. You are holding on to this reality. When someone in your life dies, you are grieving. If you did not hold on to this reality, you would celebrate their passing because you would know that they are transmuting to another form of existence that is beyond this one. If you truly believe that, if you truly was not holding on to it, when you lose a car, you wouldn't find yourself frustrated, angry, or any of those things. You would say, it's just a car. I've had one, I'll have another. If an accident happens to it, accidents happen. Mistakes happen. I won't make someone feel guilty about it, or I won't feel guilty about it. I won't hold shame about it. It's a car. Life happens. Things happen. We learn from it. We move forward. If anything happens in this existence, you move forward and say, what did I learn how am I spiritually better? How can I grow? Because that's the whole point, the whole purpose. If the Enoch story, which comes from the Sumerians, is true, and that there are angels who fought against God and warred and then were cast down to earth in heaven, I mean, cast down from heaven into, to the earth as their hell, then is it possible that your entire redemption process is to... El, to, is to be reconformed in this human form, reconstructed in this human form, and to redeem yourself to the God, to God, in order for you to re-enter the kingdom. You can't hold on to this reality for that to happen. You have to let go and recognize that as I do better, as I realize that my greatness is within and in order to bring that out, I must act accordingly, not holding on to this life, not realizing that 
I must treat others the way that I desire to be treated, that I must be respectful and kind, that I must love my neighbor as I love myself, that, you know, I must uh, do good things in order to receive good things. If that's the reason, then our perspective, our perspective changes. Once our perspective change, our lives change. Once our lives change, the circle that we engage in, the people we vibrate with, our tribe changes. And then happiness and love comes with it. It is not forced, as you cannot force happiness, you cannot force love. Love and happiness is a way of being. It is not a path to follow, a thing to go get and do. It is a way of just being and a way that you must just become. If you truly, truly want to elevate yourself to the higher conscious states of being, then you have to recognize that fear, guilt, shame, grief, the lies, the illusions, and the attachments to this reality are all holding you in this hell loop, constantly repeating the same cycle. Are you coming back to this existence to repeat it again in a new form, in a new body? Who's to say? You can't actually prove that and you can't actually disprove that because you don't know. Who's to say if you're rising up or if you're going down below? Who's to say that if your consciousness exists on a different dimensional plane or not? We don't know. But what we do know is that we are here in the here and now. We know that animals have a existence, a reality, that plants have an existence, a reality, that there is a mineral mind and that there is an elemental mind. We know there's a human mind and there's a spiritual mind. We know that as above, so below. We understand these basic, um, these, these basic rules of the universe. And although we may not be able to prove it on higher levels, because we can show that here, prove that here, then we know it must exist above and below. And in order for, and since we know that, then we have to exist accordingly in this reality, expecting to move to the next one. But if we know that these things keep us here, repeating the cycle, repeating in our 30, 40, 50, 80 years, 100, 200 years of life, that they keep repeating that same cycle over and over again in your life through different jobs, through different spouses, through different children, through different um, life, lifestyle situations. We know these same things keep happening over and over again and we keep falling and falling. The angels falling was not a one-time event. You are a divine spiritual being that continues to fall, rise up and fall, rise up and fall. But as you become the Christ mind, the Buddha head, satisfy your Dharma, get into the flow of the way, you begin to realize that you don't have to fall, that you can rise up, that you can go beyond the poverty of this flesh. It is a sad thing when the flesh rules the spirit and you have to recognize that it is for the spirit to rule the flesh. So y'all have a great day. Remember, you have to free yourself to be yourself. Because your greatness is non-negotiable. Good journey, good vibration.